So the question says, consider an astronaut um, traveling to a star some distance away. Um, I guess I will, um, well, uh, let me just leave that as it is. I'll just highlight it as potentially important information. Five light year away at a speed of beta. Okay, so I'm not given the speed, but it says, so that their Lorentz factor is gamma equals 30. That seems fairly high. And, um, and in fact, when you calculate beta, you will see that it's, uh, uh, it's pretty high. That's why the instruction says, as it's asking how fast is the astronaut traveling relative to Earth, that you need to specify at least the four um, place to the right of decimal. So at least the four significant figures. So, so let me do the calculation. Again, this, you, we use this formula and you know, I recommend that you, so uh, I hope <laughs> by the time we finish with the special relativity that you have a formula for gamma memorized. Gamma is uh, equal to one over square root of one minus beta squared, where beta is speed of something as a fraction of speed of light. And um, that the uh, inverse relationship, beta is equal to square root of one minus one over gamma squared. It's worth memorizing just because it occurs often. And uh, I, I think memorizing this reinforces the idea that when you know gamma, when you know Lorentz factor, you automatically know velocity. So let me just plug the numbers into calculator and see what I get. Um, one minus one divided by 30 squared. Um, Okay. Oh, I forgot to open parentheses. Let me do equals. <laughs> that will finish out this calculation, and then I can take the square root. Take the square root. Then it's a uh, zero point, and I, this must be why it says specify at least the four spaces because the fourth digit is the first number that's not equal to nine. So uh, zero point nine nine nine. Four. And I think when I specify it that way, it'll accept it as correct. But um, but uh, let me let me show you how inaccurate that would be. So let me try calculating gamma on the basis of something like zero point nine 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 four. So one divided by one minus zero point nine 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 four. Take the square. Close the parenthesis, take the square root. And when I calculate this uh, approximate gamma, you will see that it's quite a bit different from 30. This is, um, at this uh, ultra relativistic regime, you start to lose precision when you specify speed for beta. So um, there are really two ways of dealing with it. One is you just to specify way more precision than you think is necessary. Um, so that the precision in gamma is preserved or uh, more commonly done by people working in the field. Um, you start to specify your speed by specifying gamma rather than beta, because then you can specify gamma in two significant figures and you'll have two significant figure precision in many things. Whereas with beta, <laughs> I uh, preserved the four significant figures and that still didn't preserve two significant figures in gamma. So um, just for propriety's sake, let me put in 0 0.999444. Uh, 0 0.999444. I think it's more than I need, but uh, let me just do that as a demonstration. So, all right. So that's how fast the astronaut movie must be moving um, relative to Earth to get this kind of gamma factor. Now it says, King, okay, using data calculated above, calculate how long it takes for the astronaut to reach the star as measured by the earthbound observer. Okay, that's good because if it's as measured by earthbound observer, then um, I can just use the speed. Earthbound observer is an undergoing any kind of time dilation. So the astronaut is more or less moving at speed of light. So the astronaut will take more or less five years to get five light years away. So, um, so I think I can just put in five. Um, and I'm pretty sure that'll be graded as correct, I think.
And uh, if you actually take into account that this is 0.0056 or whatever, uh, less than speed of light, um, then, you know, it's like a few days uh, less than, or sorry, few days more than uh, five years to get there. So yeah. <laughs> again, this is a demonstration of how, um, specific, how the precision kind of changes. Okay. And it asks for part C, calculate how long it takes for the astronaut to reach the star as measured in their own reference frame. And this is where it's uh, useful to remember again that uh, moving clocks are slow. So uh, you can think of this uh, five year timer as a timer that's on earth. And the earth clock is moving in the reference frame of the astronaut. So the, the earth clock that's, um, wait, no, no, wait, uh, I'm doing it wrong, sorry. I was about to make a mistake. I'm not gonna make this mistake. <laughs> so <laughs> let me flip this around. <laughs> um, so let me take the point of view of the earth observer. So the earth observer, so the astronaut uh, go from Earth to the distant star five light years away. It took five years for them to do that. And I'm the Earth observer. And as the Earth observer is um, looking at the astronaut, imagine I'm looking at everything that's going on within the spaceship. And from the Earth observer's point of view, that spaceship is a, it's a moving clock. So whatever processes are going on there, that's uh, slow for me. So in the time that it took me to measure five years, the astronaut's clock has uh, uh, moved less than five years. It's uh, moved less than five years by this factor gamma. So as measured by astronaut, how long do they take to reach the distant star? It's gonna be five years divided by 30 because that's the number that's consistent with how me earth observer will observe those astronauts. So they take 0 0.1667, was that it? Some number of six and then seven <laughs> years to reach the star. Uh, in fact, there's a kind of a hint here. There's, they dropped the S here because the number here is expected to be less than one. So. Now there's a bit of a thing that, um, oh, <laughs> bit of a thing that I was leaving unexplained, which is that length contraction of the distance between earth and the star is what will explain this picture from the point of view of the astronauts. So once the astronauts are at this speed, then the distance from the earth to the five light year away star, it's not five light years away anymore. It's contracted to 0 0.167 light years. So that from the astronaut perspective, as the star approaches them at close to speed of light, it only takes 0 0.1667 years for the star to reach them. So, um, so that's the, the description of the journey from the astronaut point of view. And we'll describe this in more detail once we have all the tools we need. Um, we'll um, we'll go over a number of uh, special relativity paradoxes, which are a way to um, have a uh, time and opportunity to chew on different uh, consequences of special relativity. That's very unintuitive and uh, it's uh, very easy to, for people to make mistakes of, as you saw me almost do just now. Um, and I hope as we go through that in the upcoming weeks that you will start to develop your own intuition for special relativity so that you know what is right and what is wrong without detailed calculation. 